Hey guys, Ethan here from Extreme RC 4x4. Yeah, pretty something pretty exciting in the shop today. I hope you guys don't mind not being on the tripod because uh, I really just can't fit this in the frame. So this is a TRX 6 Snap-on truck by Traxxas. Uh, you can just see how large it is to have this in for some custom work. I'm sure you guys from the video already know but here is my Brutus on the back with plenty of room to spare and this is a big truck uh, of its own size that's a 12.8 inch wheelbase the snap-on truck is basically a TRX 6 but uh, the wheelbase has been extended I think uh, it's a little over five inches i don't remember the measurement off the top of my head but a little over five inches i think it's five and three eighths is what i measured pretty interesting haven't really seen too many uh very in-depth videos so i just wanted to show this truck uh, before i get to work on it and the frame is also extended quite a bit in the back i don't have a trx6 to compare it to but that is pretty long overhang in the back. All right, so with my truck off of here, if we can take a little bit of a closer look at it. Uh, the body typically has the front body posts in here. Uh, he didn't put them back in for me. Uh, and then there's the back set of body posts is actually part of this headache crack on the back. So take this off and you can see they sit right here. And then there's these holes in the back of the cab. All these cab lights actually do have LED lights behind them. And headlights as well. You guys can tell he really drives his trucks harder than most people do. Especially for something that costs $1,600 new. Uh, that's what he told me he paid for it. So... You guys can see here our cab lights and the light bucket for the front headlight. Pretty dirty in here. Body has a couple of cracks in it, but then you have the snap on bed, which is really long. Oh, sorry guys, one handed here. Uh, 24 inches almost from front to back so it's a lot of room to work with I believe he's actually put regular TRX 6 trucks on here this is this bed is actually so long and none of this none of these body components are screwed on this is how I got it from him um, because we're replacing the body but I just thought that this whole bed subframe was pretty interesting I have these two rails that go the full length and then there's a bunch of these little cross members the bed is not Lexan it's uh, thicker than that I don't really know how to describe it and then there's a bunch of marker lights on the side here and it has the wheel chocks in it but I think those are for one of the other snap-on vehicles that was available lights in the headache rack as well so this whole bed screwed on but pretty interesting really long off the back side though all right so now we get to take a look at the snap-on frame it has this back bumper on it pretty simple uh has a receiver hitch on it d-rings and then a bunch of lights only ones that don't work are the reverse lights because there's no LEDs back there but all the brake lights have lights for them as your traditional TRX4 shocks I believe this is probably the same setup as you'll find on a regular TRX6 these pieces um, because the holes for all of them are still up here like you could take all this and put it where it should be and then cut the frame short if you wanted to. I don't I don't know why you would though, because I don't think you'll ever find a set of these frame rails, at least not for a very reasonable price. 
he painted his silver. They come black like all the other Cherix 4s. And this is the interesting piece. This would be really hard to find if you managed to break it somehow. Because it has all of your link mounts in it. So it moves all of these links that are normally on the skid plate here. Moves them all back. And we also have a carrier bearing for the drive shaft. Which is an interesting piece. So you actually have four drive shafts on this. So the front drive shaft this kind of intermediate drive shaft, the back one, and then there's another intermediate shaft between these two. So this piece is very interesting. One giant block that has all the link mounts on it and that carrier bearing in there. Um, something that I was curious about on these TRX-6s is that this center axle housing or this back axle housing, these are probably both new to the TRX-6 Sorry, I'm kind of learning about this uh, with you guys, but I do not have a TRX-6. I'd like to get one, but uh, seeing the sides that the ring gears are on is interesting. Those have to be switched, otherwise these wheels would run in different directions. But um, pretty much from like this point forward, the truck is the same as any other TRX-4. He doesn't have the stock snap-on wheels and tires on it but it had some nice kind of chrome wheels and I'm not sure what tires it had on but I'm pretty sure there are different tires than the canyon trails that you typically see and then you guys know the battery tray normally sits here when I got it from him it didn't have it in there I have a feeling you probably just got done um, getting these frame rails painted and put back together so um, another change on the frame rails is, I guess not really on the frame, but typically you have like a rock slider that is bolted here. Uh, these black pieces are actually mounts for these steps. And then in the back here, there's also mounts for these toolboxes on both sides and the toolboxes bolt up back here as well. This side seems a lot looser than this side. This side is like really rigid, like that's pretty impressive for being a fuel tank and toolbox and only being attached where it is so i think right here this screw missing is kind of the culprit for why this side is so loose and maybe a screw back there that's not quite tight so that'll be getting taken care of pretty just probably find a screw stick in there but uh, this is a pretty big project for me physically and on sort of an engineering standpoint. But I do have to give Traxxas some props for something that was probably a very limited run. Um, these parts are really nice. The body seems to be well thought out and especially that flatbed. So hopefully you guys find this interesting. I've always kind of been curious about how it runs. Um, I posted a video of this truck running in February this guy runs it pretty hard, so just gonna have to build everything really tough for him. As you can see, the damage on these components, but seems to be running pretty good. He's got this big 1900 kV brushless motor in here. I don't really know anything about brushless motors, but should be pretty interesting. I guess we got a lot to figure out, so. Enjoy the video guys, just want to make this little introduction and kind of show you the frame, answer any questions if you had them, because I was definitely curious about a lot of this stuff, so let's get into it. Alright guys, here I am with a little bit of an update for you. So this is, um, I don't think I mentioned it yet, but we're going to put this Axial uh, SCX-10 transmission uh, somewhere in this area. This is going to be a, a winch actually so I have to build a winch spool to go on the output shaft of the transmission. also have a separate motor and ESC for this so what I'm probably going to do is build a plate here 
with some tabs that bend down and then attach to the frame rails and then we'll be able to set this in place here but uh, the cab is currently being machined right now I'm not sure how much of that I'm gonna be able to get done today today is Wednesday I picked this up on Saturday afternoon so this is uh, about my fourth day of working on this I finally have the design to a place where I'm willing to start making parts so I have the front interior done and this I was able to use I don't know if you guys can see that far away for this I was able to use the same mounting points as the Brutus body with the hood so I was able to use that design to make this design basically without having to take a bunch of measurements um, I just took measurements off the Brutus body in the design and then this is the exact same place where the pins would be through the hood of the Brutus um, so got this guy in place this kind of gives you an idea how tall it's gonna be and this is only the first row of seats there's gonna be three rows of seats so I have a middle interior and then I have a back interior and the cab should go just a little bit past this point is what I think it's gonna be. Once I have the cab done, I'm gonna be able to start working on the bed, but I need to get the cab done first so that I can make sure that I have uh, the clearance I need between the bed and the cab. Um, before that though, what I need to do before I get any parts off is that I need to cut this black piece off of these sliders so I need to remove this off of here so that I can do some cutting with the Dremel so here we can take a better look at the uh, I guess this whole toolbox fuel tank setup you can't put anything in here because it has all this uh, webbing bracing inside of it and then I guess we can remove this black plastic piece off of the fuel tanks before I get the Dremel out all right so about to make permanent changes Basically what I'm going to do is take this hole, I'm going to try and cut along that line right there. And then uh, that way the body will be able to sit nicely in there. Go grab the Dremel. Alright guys, well, first permanent modification made, uh, I got that cut off, took it over to the sander, sanded it down. As you can see, this thing is just absolutely huge, I'm having a hard time even getting it all in the camera. Um, my workbench feels really cramped having it up here, so I'm trying to work with you guys. Uh, so let's put that back together, I actually have one side done that we can bolt up to see how it looks so basically that piece was just there to hold the uh, snap-on cab so we won't need that anymore and it was going to interfere with where the body needs to sit so if you guys are like me and you do a ton of wrenching 
this little Milwaukee M4 screwdriver worth every dollar. I rarely charge the battery in this. You could probably build two trucks on one battery with this thing. And the battery is super tiny. I'll show it to you guys. It's that big. Pretty incredible tool. You might notice that I have it set up on blocks for no reason other than the foams on these tires are really soft. These are the tires I had on my TRX4 before I swapped them back to those new Canyon Trail Traxxas tires. So the foams in these are really soft and this body's gonna weigh even more than the Brutus. So he already has some tires on older. They're just not here yet. Oh, good. I'm glad that fits. This is a huge chunk of aluminum. So this is one side. As you can see, it's going to be a six-door configuration. Um, the only thing that's going to be bolted on here is fender flares. And those aren't done printing yet. It's a lot of printing hours going into this too. So let me get some screws. And we can bolt this to the interior. Alright guys, so here's what's happening with the body. I have all the holes countersunk, some screws in, uh, at least to the interiors. And uh, you can see I sanded the whole panel down, cut the windows out, all that that needed to happen. And looks like all the measurements came out just right. Um, I will compare my measurements to the bed that we're getting put on this to make sure that we'll have enough room between them. They're two separate pieces, obviously. Uh, the middle interior is being printed right now, but basically the interiors in the back are the same as the ones in the front, just no shifters, no dash. And what was I gonna say? Oh, these interiors, I could have made them deeper. That's what I would have done personally if this was my truck. Um, I could have made them deeper so that uh, they would sit basically on top of the battery tray but seeing how he has his electronics all set up in here and he told me he wants to run a 4s battery in this i was just going to try and give him as much room as i could uh, down there while still keeping the interiors now um right now the windshield's being cut so i can work on the other side which is probably what i'll do in a second after i get you guys caught up but 
put in an order for screws they should be here tomorrow so uh, this is all of the screws I have right now so uh, I also have these light buckets for the front these are the same as on the Brutus body if you can't tell uh, this is basically the Brutus body but made into a forward control uh, it has the same fender line and then a matching one in the front no tire rub yet but I'll keep you guys updated All right, so you guys saw that clip of me putting this together a second ago. Um, since then, I have countersunk these holes for the transmission on the bottom. So basically what this is, is a winch mount surface, or not really a winch mount, but a transmission mount, because we have this transmission that's going to become our winch, which has a loose screw on it for some reason. I'm not totally sure about this guys, this is just something he dropped off with a truck for me, but just axial transmission, so it's going to go right on that plate. Also on the plate, if there is any slop at all, I have these four uh, threaded holes uh, at each corner that sit on the frame rails, so if there is any slop in this, you could put some set screws in there and kind of push this off the frame and against these plates, which would uh, essentially take out all that slop. So what I have to do first though, is I have some of these, well, you guys don't know, but these are actually part of the body mounting system in the back. I know it looks kind of silly, but the idea is that these will latch onto the back of the body, which sounds really good on paper. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to see how it works and then I have these springs that are gonna go on there as well All right, so got that one on it's even with just one screw in there this whole plate is not moving at all, so it's either tight downwards or these two plates are being kind of pushed like this, which is putting tension on the plate. So really glad I don't have to put any set screws in onto the frame and damage the paint, but that would be a good last resort in case we needed it. Alright guys, inner fender's installed. You can also see my uh, body post mounts in here. These are, uh, even if we're not going to use them, they're put in place so that I can reference where the body is supposed to be sitting on the frame, uh, which kind of makes everything a lot easier for me so that I know I'm taking good measurements when I'm measuring off this thing on the frame. 
Still gotta kinda complete the grill hood and I'm calling it the chin on the bottom uh, once I kinda figure out what I'm doing for a hinge. But just wanted to make sure we get inner fenders in this. I know he didn't have them in there originally, but I like to have them, um, especially because they don't really impact anything negatively, at least unless weight maybe. All right, so here you go, guys. This thing is still too big to fit in the frame, so. Um, got the bed sides on. This deck is just resting on here. Uh, I can start putting screws in this if I want to, but I think I still need to take this off, so I don't want to get it completely bolted down yet. And then the opposite side is on as well. So. As you can see, I put some toolboxes uh, kind of etched into this, like I do the doors. Uh, otherwise, it's just a big, like, blank space, so that helps make that look better. Uh, I also put toolboxes in the rear on both sides, uh, so that looks really good. Um, I need to cut the tailgate for this thing still, but... It's looking a lot better now that I have the flatbed on it. Kind of puts everything into perspective. It was looking a little bit weird with just the cab on it, so I'm glad this kind of has wrapped things together well. Uh, you guys saw how I installed the rods on the frame, so this bed is actually uh, bolted down to the frame. Uh, if somebody wanted to take the, this bed off, the easiest way to do it would be to remove this countersunk screw, this countersunk screw, and then the screw in the middle. And then if you do that on both sides, this should come off bef now that right now since the boom is not on there. If you had the boom on here, you might have to take the boom off, but there's just six screws and then this all should lift right off. And I do have some spots for lights right here. And right here, those are for the stock Traxxas lights. I might need to order some hardware to install those. I'm not sure if I have the perfect size because these are tapped to be uh, two and a half millimeter hardware. Uh, on the other side, I also have a spare tire mount. I'll show you. So you can see a spare tire is going to go right there. I don't have any tires out here with me right now. This is the spare tire well, I'm calling it, where the spare tire is going to sit. It's just going to go right here, which I could probably screw in. So now this is screwed in, you can kind of see what I have going on here. Uh, the spare tire is going to go right there. There's going to be an eighth inch aluminum plate that goes uh, on the front side of this, but then behind 
this piece right here. So I still need to cut that piece out. And then I need to countersink these two holes right here. And this one I forgot to do. So this whole deck's going to have to come off and go back to the drill press. Everything's pretty much going to need to come apart for me to install the lights on here anyways. I just kind of wanted to make sure everything fits and everything looks good. So far things are looking pretty good to me. Um, I do have the back of the cab. I still need to work on here. As well as the front grill needs to go on and parts of the hinged cab need to be done so still pretty far from done i also need to make the winch spool and the piece that's going to hold the bearing right there so kind of just getting started i have a lot of wiring to do with lights and i bought these fancy zip ties that have a hole in them so that i can put them on the bottom of the bed that's what this hole's for this hole is for that, and then I got these two holes in the center, so I can put these on the bottom of the bed and run the wires. There's a ton of holes in the bed, as you might have noticed, but I have some bracing that's going in the back here to hold the tailgate on. And then these three holes bolt onto those pieces on the fenders like you saw. so. Should be a pretty rigid deck, which is what I want. But yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys back up when I have more to show you. This is all I really got right now. Hey guys, so by now you've probably figured out that uh, what we're building here is a wrecker platform, um, not like a rollback like the Snap-on truck originally was. So right now what I'm making is the winch spool. Um, it's on time lapse here, so I'm gonna finish the rest of this video out in a time lapse. Uh, ended up having a pretty significant time crunch here at the end of the build, so. Um, I really didn't get a whole lot of video footage here at the end. Um, just had a couple days where I really put a lot of time into this and um, I didn't really have a great opportunity to get any filming done uh, with the time pressure I had. So uh, this winch spool turned out really good. I've never really made anything like this on the lathe and I was lucky enough to have a friend of mine who was able to provide me with the round stock to be able to make this and it turned out really well i only had one shot at it only had one good piece of round stock so this turned out really good and you know it's gonna that trans winch is gonna work out really well so um as you can see here kind of some finished pictures of how the truck uh ended up turning out um now i did wire up a bunch of lights to go on this as you can see in one of these pictures here um, but the winch boom has kind of three different settings of the height for that winch boom. Um, it's also designed to work with uh, some of these linear actuators that I had purchased at the same time. Now, uh, keep in mind this build occurred probably a year ago now at this point, but I'm just now getting to making the video. I was kind of hoping to um, get some video footage of this truck in person, but... Um, that hasn't happened yet at this point. The owner of the truck is uh, in the process of painting it. 
and um, so hopefully sometime this year I'll be able to see the truck finished and uh, maybe do a video coming back on how it's and how it has ended up now at this point and uh, as you can see he already changed the wheels and tires which was definitely necessary the wheels and tires that were on it when I had my hands on it were uh, far too soft for the weight of the truck uh, the body was pretty heavy you know keep in mind that the Brutus body is pretty heavy and then this has a whole ton more aluminum in it and um, you know other than that this is a fun build uh, I really took a lot of the design from the Brutus um, which was very helpful made things go a little bit faster but um, still a very unique design and it's going to be completely one off is my guess um, but this is just something he wanted to have me do and definitely a really cool project to do on the snap-on chassis uh, very unique to be such a long frame uh, really like opens up a lot of opportunities so I look forward to seeing the truck in person I haven't actually seen it since uh, I dropped it off to him so I'm sure he's done a lot to uh, finish it up when it had left me you know um, I just had the body all pretty much set and ready to go and um, yeah so I think it turned out really well it was a ton of work it was a very big project for me uh, to take on I apologize I didn't get uh, better video footage for you guys but um, sometimes getting things done um, kind of is more important than getting the video footage and um, this has occurred or the that initial build of this truck is probably about a year ago uh, maybe a little less than that at this point but I thought I would uh, take a minute here and get this video put out so you guys can get, be caught up to date and uh, hopefully I'll be putting out a few more videos um, over the next few months just to kind of catch you guys up um, it has been a while since I've posted any videos so this is a project to work on last year I should be sharing some things here in the near future but let me know what you think um, you know was the TRX-6 snap-on was that original body better or would you prefer this wrecker with the trans winch and anyways guys thanks for watching uh, please like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video